Hey guys, I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho at a really, really cool urban farm. This urban farm is about a tenth of an acre. There's about 13 beds in production right now, so not a ton, but they've got a really slick high tunnel next to me here. And this urban farm is attached to a grocery store called Pilgrim's Market in here that sells produce and all kinds of other health foods stuff. It's kind of like a Trader Joe's, but they've got this farm where they're growing all their own greens or as many as they can. In fact, they sell, the greens that they grow sell so well that there's actually, they're completely sold out in the store until they get their next harvest. There's actually nothing. I wanted to take some greens home, but they're sold out. So that's a good sign. This farm is run by a guy named Young Bennett, who is a student of mine. He's been in my online course. He was at my workshop yesterday here, just outside of Coeur d'Alene. And uh, he's gonna talk about this farm and introduce you guys to the Pilgrim's Market urban farm. All right, let's get into it. All right, Young, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming by. This is a really cool setup. You're, you're growing food and you're selling it right here. And I remember when we, uh, I met you the other day, you had a term that you coined. It was an acronym for something. GR, yeah, GRH, grown right here. Grown right here. So you're labeling produce that's right here. And then, we're selling and it then you're selling it in the store. Yeah, that's super cool. So tell everybody a little bit about um, what this is. Well, so uh, we started Pilgrim's Market. Uh, Joe Hamilton started Pilgrim's Market in 1999 uh, with the kind of the mindset in Coeur d'Alene of doing something natural and organic, organic, but also to to create more education and awareness for our environment mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of the, the environment that we live in and the culture that we live in. So we've kind of, uh, we've whittled down that over the years and this was something that we've been talking about for a long time, um, since I, actually since I started working here four years ago uh, with the idea of we saw what Elliot Coleman was doing, we saw what you were doing and uh, Jean Martin uh, was doing as far as uh, the urban setting on a farm uh, farm scale. Yeah, had read articles like what you know uh, they were doing on rooftops in Chicago and yeah and things like that. Yeah, and yeah, we're like, yeah. Why can't we do that here? Yeah, and so uh, there was several different parts of that. Um, this what you're seeing uh, as far as the greenhouse and um, and and this 0.94 of an acre was two residential plots, and so we we ended up uh, purchasing both of those. One house was already burned down, and then we ended up demolishing the other house, and and so it's just been kind of a, a, a slow, uh, somewhat arduous process at times, um, getting special use permits from the city, um, having them understand what's going on as far as what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do. The high tunnel was uh, kind of a, a feed in itself because we were doing um, we were doing something that they had never seen before. And so yeah, beer cuts just tick boxes, right? So if yeah. there isn't a box to tick, they go, uh, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. What is this? In fact, we had a couple gentlemen that didn't even know we had to, uh, explain what on the uh, city council, what a, uh, what a high tunnel was, actually. <laughs> which is, which is kind of crazy, right? <laughs> so wait a second. Was it, was it not an issue when you just wanted to garden it without the greenhouse? Was the issue when you wanted to put up the tunnel? Well, the, the garden just, period was was uh they they there were a lot of questions about it okay um and and then we 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 wanted to do incorporate a high tunnel from the beginning right and so that was part of the conversation from the beginning um but but all of it so there were some uh bylaws that have been set in place here in Coeur d'Alene for some time now and you could actually go back as far as like uh, big ag and their involvement in this area um and when they instituted institutionalize the those bylaws uh, for this for the city of Coeur d'Alene but essentially we couldn't uh, grow produce here and sell it uh, retail um, so uh, yeah in within city limits and so we don't have you, you don't have well until last year we don't have anybody that's actually um, 
you know, growing produce in their backyard and selling it, you know, to the public. You don't have a little little stand, or they're not showing up at the, you know, the local the farmers market. market or anything like that. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit outside of city limits, but you know, as for you know, the Coeur d'Alene. So that was part of it was you know coming before uh, the city as a grocery store that you know has had quite a bit of impact in the community you know for 20 years. Uh, and saying, hey, you know, we're looking at this and we really want to see it happen for us, but we also want to see it for, you know, the rest of the community. Yeah. And so they, we came up with a special use permit to be able to use your, your land, your vacant lot, or if you've got a friend that's got a vacant lot and, you know, and put a, put a farm a garden in so it. you guys were the trailblazers in a way that if p other people want to do this now in Coeur d'Alene, totally it. it's easier. Yeah. Um, now that's Coeur d'Alene specific. It's not Idaho specific, no. right? No, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you were saying 0.94 of an acre of the lots, but production wise, you've got yeah, what Maybe, a tenth of an acre, yeah. something like yes. that. Yeah. How 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 many beds did you say there so was? So I got 13 uh, beds outside. For, are they? These are 50 foot. 30. They, they are 50 foot. 50 foot yeah. beds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. These guys are 30 foot. Those guys on the end are, are 50 foot, just because of the space. Right. And that beautiful tree. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that I was saying you should cut down, but it, maybe not. Um, and that area that's tarped, are you going to put more beds in there? I am. That, okay. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, okay. we'll put three more beds over there. So we'll we'll grow our production um, a, a little bit. But also, we've got a over here, and, and you can't see it, but we have this uh, our office, which is a, a res residential house. It's got a front yard, and um, it, we're mowing it right now. And I can't stand that. So we're going to yeah. rip up the sod yeah. and actually plant something over there. That's, so. that's super cool. So... You guys, I mean, it, it, the cool thing is, is you're growing what makes the most amount of sense. You're just growing greens. Um, was there other things that you experimented with? I mean, I did see there's some tomatoes in the greenhouse. Yeah, we have 160 uh, tomato plants. I did Torangina. Uh, it's a cherry tomato. Okay. Uh, Johnny's. And we did uh, New Girl. And um, I was just trying to get a sense of what worked and what didn't work. Uh, our experience up to this point as far as farming uh, a gentleman, Jeremiah, and I's uh, experience uh, was pretty pretty small. And um, in fact, mine was like at my house. We have our house is uh, 375 square feet, and it's above a garage. And our our lawn is a concrete driveway. And so for the last six years, we've been doing um, buckets, oh, uh, yeah. five gallon buckets, uh -huh. and kind of like those ones on the side. Yeah, oh, no, five gallons are those. Are the yeah, yeah. Ones, so they're yeah. but growing our tomatoes and our peppers and everything else. So right. So I had some experience with trellising and so forth, but we wanted to see kind of what it would be in large scale, and so I I just put a bunch of stuff in trays and you know and and transferred it uh, or transplanted it the first of the year without the you know we literally had like almost 100% success rate on our germination for our tomatoes and for our peppers. Uh, we're growing, and we're growing, I guess I should say, uh, bell peppers, serranos, and habaneros, because I just needed something yeah. to start with. Sure. And we had, we had up until uh, the first of the week, total uh, pepper plants, we had 208 pepper plants. And the reason why we, we ended up doing that was because I had like, you know, 97, 98% success rate on our germination. Instead of just throwing stuff out, I decided to plant all of yeah, it right. and forget the cucumbers <laughs> and everything else. So it was, it's crazy. I mean, you're thinking, wow, you got 70 Serrano plants and they're all four foot tall and they're all like producing. That's a lot know, of Serrano. That's a lot of Serrano. Who's going to buy all those? So Are they selling in the store? And that was part of the process is like, I'm growing it, but I also have to figure out how we're going to use it. Yeah. So it's getting together with different departments and saying, "Hey, we could, you know, we can incorporate it into this product and this product." And so we're, uh, we have a fermentation um, group in our in our store called Culture Mama, and Culture Mama does fermented. They do krauts and do all, all, you know, Sweet. kind of yeah. It's it's actually really cool. So we did, we uh, came up with a sauce. Well, we came up with a couple sauces, hot sauces. Are you into hot sauce? Yeah. I need to give you some hot okay, sauce. Okay, I'll take some yeah. hot sauce for sure. But but so that we're incorporating the the you know the tomatoes, the new girls, the serranos, and the habaneros into yep. those products. We came up with this, and you guys are welcome to use this if you want for your. Uh, but we did a, a fresh uh, market salsa, and it's just a mild salsa, you know, with your typical your cilantro and your yep. onions and tomatoes and everything. But then we incorporated a green 
uh, Serrano and we put it up on top and um, and and basically um, you know we're we're saying hey it's up to you to cut as much of that as you want and uh -huh. like oh, that's spice a great, it yourself that's a great idea. is what it's called so yeah so the label on it and I can show you that uh, but it's it's spice it yourself is what the oh wow yeah that's so great. anyway so yeah it's like we have this overabundance I don't want to get rid of any of it and and it's me buying books and trying to figure out you know can we dry peppers can we make pe peppers into paste can we reconstitute peppers and the same thing applies for the tomatoes as well. Super, super cool. How is it, um, so I'm just curious about the structure. Is this a separate enterprise or is this run under the, the banner of the store? Sure, so we're, we're, we have 13 departments in our store. Okay. And, and uh, well, now we have 14 departments. So it's another department. So it in the is store. essentially another department. So I have margins that I have to follow. I'm also working with other departments that have margins that they have to follow. And a lot of those margins, because of what I'm doing, you know, the produce agricultural aspect of it, I'm competing essentially with large um, conglomerates, Charlie's yeah. Produce and OGC as far as pricing, which is, it's almost impossible. Um, but that's part of the process of, of us learning, you know, what, what we need to do in the future and how to make it more successful. Yeah, because I wonder, has, has it been sort of a challenge to figure out the profitability of certain things? Because you're not selling it. Right. So you're not, you don't, you're not really seeing, how are you figuring out your pricing and, and, and what's making money and what isn't? If it's just going there, you know, it's not like selling it to a customer and saying, okay, I'm getting $8 a pound for this, so that's good, or they want six and I can't do that. Like, how are you figuring out what's economical for you to grow and what isn't essentially like right now um i i could argue and honestly it's the you know we're coming to the end of the season and it's going to be a week of me um you know literally getting on my on my sheets and you know putting all of the information that i've been recording this whole time and trying to figure out what's going on i have a feeling though the first year obviously it's the first year uh, we've got a lot to learn but it, it's not it this part of it isn't necessarily profitable um, because because of that competition, right? And 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 it's and it's essentially so we've got some things that we need to figure out as far as a store and how we, you know, handle uh, our margins and and you know essentially I'm dealing with double margins. I've got a department that wants to keep their margins at a certain point. Yep. They've got to see or they have to show a profit for their department, and so they're looking at you know their that forty to you know the 30, 35 to 45 or whatever that margin percentage is. And so it's like looking at different things, uh, looking at things a little different right, ways so that right. we can do it. So uh, in a sense, a lot of, well, I, okay, I'll take that back. So if we're able to package, and I started doing this at the first of the year because I, I realized that we were gonna have a problem actually making a profit on the farm. So we started packaging, I bought the five ounce clamshells, yeah, yeah. Uh, came up with the label with the grown right here kind of idea. And then we we're packaging our arugula and our spinach, and then we're selling it to the produce department. The cool thing about arugula and spinach is my price point on it is, uh, is such that I can get almost eight dollars a pound yes. on those two products. So that is that's a win for yeah, me. Right. Um, and then other things like the radishes, super easy. Well, and you guys all know this. You know the radishes are super easy to grow. There's not they don't take a lot um, as far as nutrient. Um, and you know, as far as fertil you know, fertilize fertilizer and yeah. so that's I mean I can get um, I can get you know ninety nine cents a bundle, and and sell those all day. And right. So those are things that I can you know rely on. I think that the big thing was um, greens, 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 yeah. greens. Yeah. And the high tunnel is an interesting aspect of it because we're wanting to do some different things with salsas. And try new ideas with different salsas and and sauces and and some kind of visionary things that Joe, the owner of the store, has talked about uh, in the past. And that's kind of what that will be. So it's trying to figure out what peppers work, which peppers don't, but also to peppers that I can incorporate into the produce department that other uh, pro providers aren't, you know, offering. You know, kind of right. cool. You know, like the. Um, there's just so many cool peppers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, so how's stuff selling? Like, so we talked a little bit about the stuff that you've sent to the other departments that are processing it. But as far as your packaged greens, sure. how are those selling in the store? Like 
sold on I mean, there's, they're sold out right now. In. I can't keep it in. Yeah, I can't yeah. keep it in stock. Okay. And initially, everybody was like, oh, wow, you're pr producing too much. Can you produce less? <laughs> yeah. Or can you, like, cut part of it, you know, yeah. and then let the rest of it sit? And it was just trying to educate people. It, when it's ready, yeah, it's it's ready. And, right. And so it's it's trying to communicate and, and be agreeable um, with the departments as far as what's available and what's not. Because, and this is the catch too, they're so used to uh, when they need something, they you know they write it down on their uh, order sheet with Charlie's or OGC's and it's here the next day. Right. And so they don't have to worry about whether or not OGC has a farm that had was wiped out by aphids. Yeah. And, and you know, it's so relevant to them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just that you know yeah. like we've we were doing uh, really well with uh, Rula for a while there. And then you know we had some issues as far as germination and and some um, some deficiency soil deficiencies like red arugula just crazy stuff mm -hmm. initially um, and it's like well wait a minute you had it before why why don't you have it now yeah and that's well it's because I've got an acre to work on and, yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah how was it when you first developed this site was there because you were mentioning that over on that side there. That was a house. So there, there were two houses. Two houses here, front so and double. backyard. Right. And they were, and so uh, initially, um, the actually the house on the corner was one of the oldest houses in this neighborhood, and it's been it, it, at least a hundred years. Right. Uh, this this house is a little bit newer. So that's part of the whole thing too. Is like I've got, I've got, uh, I've got to get rid of the houses the hazmat issues. And you had to re remediate the soil. To totally. Some you had to bring in new soil. 100%. And, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got the soil test back, it was, it's Full number one, I mean, you can see it, it's loomy, yep. silty loom, and it's yep. just, you know, it's not great for growing it. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and it was just completely depleted yep. um, over years. The cool thing about this area, and, and that's what's neat about this uh, attempt is, I mean, it's successful. I shouldn't call it an attempt. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is like this was all farmland. It was originally, yeah, yeah at one yeah, point. So yeah. it, I mean, I feel like it's got a sense that it can be that again. Sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. But so what? What was involved in that process? Did you have to bring a backhoe in, scrape out the ba the bad stuff, and then bring in new stuff? What did no, you? What did you have to do? Yeah. So we, I basically brought in. I've brought in. Uh, man, I'll have to. I'll have to. You know, I'm not sure exactly. I know it's been over 20 yards of. Of compost and topsoil, yeah, and essentially I've just built up on right. what was already here. The high tunnel was easy because um, that was, you know, that was um, trying to create a foundation for it and bringing in, you know, fresh soil for it again. Yeah, uh, the house over there, we had to, you know, dig up the house. So anyway, but essentially, I didn't, I didn't carve out, and honestly, we should have. Yeah, uh, I should have carved out a bunch of it and 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 then started, you know, putting, you know. But it's so it's like an acre, yeah. and you're trying to do that with a whole acre. It's, you know, that's that's a lot. It is. Yeah. I mean, you could focus on your blocks though. Totally. Too, and you've kind of done that with we the have. houses of a yeah. Guy. Yeah. Wow. So what's um, what are you guys gonna change going forward into this? Because we're wrapping up the season here now. Yeah. What what's what's gonna be new next year? Yeah. So we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go through winter. Uh, we're gonna grow. I'm in the process of of doing it in fact we're um, pulling out beds of peppers uh, tomatoes will be done in the middle part of October and uh, everything will be ripe I'll be pulling tomatoes out and we're gonna I'm just doing succession planting of mizuna and spinach Spin, yeah and, all the cold greens and I'm Good. I'm a little bit behind right now but I think it's still warm enough yeah and we get this the sunlight that we need that yep. I think will be okay to establish something uh, and then we'll just be, obviously we'll be harvesting off of that. We'll cut back considerably. This will become just, we'll stale seed all of this. And, yep. But I've got, Monday I've got um, another seven yards of compost, brown brown compost that's coming in. And we're gonna, we're just gonna keep building the beds up on, on both sections and in, in the high tunnel. So. Cool. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Cool. All right. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with Pilgrim's Market, I will leave their Instagram handle right down below in the show notes. Make sure to follow them and uh, see where they go over the next couple of years. All right, guys. Talk to you later.